Hey everybody, Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and I'm coming at you live from a little cabin up north. I wanted to spend the last couple days of 2020 just resetting and hanging out by myself. I love my roommate, but I really like being by myself. <laughs> so I never would have said that in 2017. So here I am, and I had a lot of plans to do certain filming things, and coincidentally had left my bag with my ring light, with my phone arm, in my bag at home. So the universe is trying to tell me something and I am not listening. I wanted to film some things for you all uh, around getting set up for the next year to have maybe a more intentional, productive year. Today, I wanted to talk to you about my goals. I have actually never posted my goals before online in a video. It's kind of a vulnerable thing for me. If you followed me for a while, you know that I don't necessarily follow the kind of linear structure of goal setting. I wanted to share my voice on this because a lot of people, based on what you see online, it's very much about like this one way of setting goals to achieve things. And as someone who has achieved quite a few things in her life, I wanted to say that that's not the only way, and I have been trying to figure out how to be more cyclical, agile, and intuitive about my goal setting and pursuit of a more intentional, meaningful, fulfilling life. So this is how I'm setting it up, and hopefully I can infuse some follow-ups with what is working for me and what is a little bit more of a forgiving, cyclical meandering process with goal setting. So let's right. So this is me holding up my phone to record this video. Bear with me. I'm going to be using the Moxie Life companion notebooks as my goal setting system to incorporate with my other systems in my passion planner and my bullet journal. You can see my walkthrough of these notebooks in the link up above to see what those pages look like for yourself. But here is how I am filling this out for me. So we start off with the life compass, which is very similar to level 10 life in that you are trying to rate yourself on these different areas of your life. To do that, she helps you break it down by asking you a bunch of questions. So here's what I wrote down. So the first section is the personal and I was looking at this and honestly can give myself a pretty high score on these. I noticed that some people's ranges for the moxie life compass are lower and I have a lot of mine in like the 6 to 10 range. So I don't know what that means in terms of personal scale, but I know that my basic needs are covered. I'm very, very privileged in this way. I don't, I didn't lose my job during the pandemic and I can take care of all those basic needs. And I think the main part that I have room to grow in in this area is taking time to actually look at my life, take a step back and reflect. I often skip a little bit of the weekly reflection parts. I will plan, of course, because I need to, but I found myself this year working a lot more on my planner rather than on my plans, and I want that to change. So that is going to be a shift that I'm making. So right now I would give myself like an 8.5 in that area total. In the fun and recreation, I think the biggest goal for me is honestly to just do some more fun activities that aren't working. I am a workaholic. I have also been very lucky to have jobs that really align with my purpose and my values. So it's really easy for me to keep going and find more opportunities that are related to those things and just keep being you know, productive on even my days off. I also want to be more intentional about planning activities that maybe I am just hanging out with friends just for the sake of that, you know, more of those things. I think the hardest part about this is knowing how deeply embedded in my system grind culture is. So trying to make sure that I take actual breaks, I don't check email, I don't even have my phone and doing more of that this year. So in the end, I'm gonna give myself a 7.5 in this area. For work and learning, I've divided it into two categories. One is my day job working at the university and one is my content creation and art side hustle thing. So in these two areas, I am very, very lucky again because I have work that I really choose to align with and on the downside over identify with. So my day job, I'm very lucky. It is work that I care about and find really purposeful. So there's a lot of tens in this area. The only thing that I need to be able to do is to have a plan to expand my skill set in a more intentional, proactive way, which ties back to that personal goal of stepping back, 
reflecting and working on my plans and not just on my planner. And then for my content creation area, I do want to spend more time being intentional about what it is that I want to post on here. I don't want to post just to post. Um, I'm very active on Instagram and I love engaging in the community there and building some of my art portfolio through commissions and stuff like that. I want to get more intentional about some passive income from my art and doing more things that are sustainable in the long run. So for this, I would give myself like a 9.5 in my day job and then maybe an 8.5 in my side hustle. Last summer when I did the goal setting in my Moxie Life Planner in July, I actually had the fewest number of goals in the family and relationships area because it's honestly, I've been very blessed to have a solid foundation of support and friends. And yet I still find myself feeling like that was the area in which I grew the most. I think a lot about my family and I've had a lot of struggles with that. Anybody who's a second generation Asian person, I feel like understands this interesting cultural gap between them and their parents if they are refugees. My parents came here uh, when they were younger, they met here and the kind of gaps in my experience and what they were expecting from me was really vast. And we got into a lot of arguments when I was younger and it's been a struggle, honestly. And it wasn't until my divorce in 2016, 2017, where things changed and it was a big enough event that shook up all of their expectations for me and what our relationship looked like. And it was the first kind of real emotional conversation that we've ever really had. And not that we've had them ever again, but that really transformed our relationship to being much more understanding and accepting. And I have a lot of gratitude for them and everything they've done for me. And, you know, we were all doing the best that we could in the moment that we were in. And I could just tear up talking about this right now. Um, but over quarantine, I really wanted to spend quality time with them, connecting with them, and specifically around my culture. I don't want to lose that when they pass. And thinking about the recipes that I want to know how to make. And I, I learned more Cantonese this summer because I wanted to be able to connect in that way. And being able to have our conversations now is just so completely different. So anyway, that was me just fangirling about my family and maybe you can relate, maybe not. But high scores all around in general, you know, 8.5. Health and wellness is always something that I'm looking at. I, again, don't want to chase any particular number, but I do want to feel strong feel vital and feel like I will last a long time in this world. There's a lot of things that I want to experience. So the physical pieces are important for me. And once again, committing to taking care of my physical health in terms of being able to sleep. I have been going to bed at like 1.30 or 2. I'm like, just got to cut that shit out. We got to dial it back. I am a night person and I'm leaning into that, but we got to take it in the reins, you know, reel it back. In terms of movement, I think that has always been hard, especially now that I'm, again, in a 10 foot by 10 foot bedroom, trying to do my art studio, work, teach, sleep, relax in there. It's really hard. So I have learned some things that I really enjoy this year in terms of physical activity. I've been doing mini dance parties in the morning, a lot of mornings. It gets me up out of my bed. I am moving in a way that I feel like is fun for me. And I've also learned that I enjoy boxing workouts. So there's an app that I use called 8Fit and it guides you through some different workouts and boxing is one of the categories. I used to be a martial artist and this is really reminiscent of those movements and it's fun. I play my Beyonce playlist and have at it. So I think having more of those activities in my back pocket to be able to deploy at any time will make it more likely that I do them. Not because I want to be on a strict routine. The more strict I am about it, the less likely I'm going to do it actually. So I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to just slip into good behavior. For spiritual and personal growth, I find this category really interesting. I do personal growth all the time. That's kind of my line of work is working with students and talking about how do we be better humans so that we can lead that way in the world, right? So I have access to a lot of these really cool conversations and love talking about it, love reading about it. So high scores in this area. The area that I wanted to add in here that's not listed explicitly is my anti-racism practice and learning more, experiencing more, and engaging more as well as sustainability. So I will be more explicit about that this year. In general, I would say that my spiritual personal growth is like an eight. Financial is where things 
are really challenging for me actually. Being in my family, I have really interesting money scripts around my relationship to wealth and money. In comparison to some of my friends and family who are really, really good at understanding complex financial concepts and systems, I don't really have the same propensity. I can understand it, but I told myself a story about how well I could manage some of those things, whether I'm capable, open to building wealth, and it's taking me a long time to undo those stories so that I can actually move forward with some of the major decisions that I have this year. Some of the things I'm thinking about are whether I want to own a home, whether I want to buy out my car or continue leasing my car. There's just a lot of these like major decisions that I've been putting off and I think working on the belief that I can handle it is going to make a major change in how I can approach some of those decisions. I have a lot of my money things automated because <laughs> Let's not trust me to just have to go somewhere, call somebody to get those things set up. It is on automatic, auto pay, everything. Investments are automatic, savings are automatic, and I use an app to track those things, not in my bullet journal. So um, in this area, I have like a 7.8 score, probably closer to 7.5. My physical environment is also a place that I want to get better at. Again, being hold up in that space makes me very aware of all my clutter and things that I have that are suffocating. So I want to be thoughtful about using up everything, shopping my stash for my planner stuff. I joined the 365 freeze challenge hosted by Dash of Plans, Holly, and I joined the Facebook group just so that I can have some kind of influence that's saying I don't need to buy from that planner sale, that sticker sale. Um, that energy has been really, really cool. So I'm gonna try and stick to that. I have some guidelines that I wanna follow for mindful spending. In my physical environment, I also wanna be thoughtful about the stuff that I'm putting into it in terms of sustainability practices. I do already compost, but I want to explore more about the intentional buying practices that I can engage with. I wanna spend less on Amazon. I want to buy more local, small, BIPOC friendly, shops. So that requires, again, me to step back and see what my needs are so that I can look at what's sustainable and what is maybe secondhand, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So in this area, I have myself at a seven. So with all of my numbers, I went in and I filled in my life compass and it looks like this. And then what you're supposed to do is circle the dots or for the numbers that you want those numbers to increase to by the end of however much time. I am choosing just a couple of these sections to focus on because some of the other ones I'm okay with where they are at, so I'll maintain them. But I'm going to be setting more of my stretch goals and progress goals in these other areas that I have highlighted here. Next is the intentions page where it walks you through questions like what do you want more of and less of? And for me, I want more confidence to have some initiation or energy around hard decisions that I need to make based on my own timing, my own goals and own beliefs, and you know, maybe more vegetables. Um, what I need less of are things like spending time on procrastinating, planning, making myself feel like I'm being productive when I'm just, you know, playing in my planner, which is fine. I still want to do that, but I don't want to spend all of my time on it. And then in terms of aspirational groceries, I could use a little less of those and just be honest with myself. Like I'm not going to eat that giant bag of spinach. I'm just not. Okay. You know, with kicking back off my YouTube channel, I want to continue sharing more about what I'm excited about and believe that people actually care about what it is that I have to say and posting about it without second guessing myself all the time. If I had to really drill down as to what habits would help me make the most of these goals, I think about doing my weekly and monthly resets and committing to doing those each week because that is going to be where I step outside of myself and look at the plans and the goals that I've set and how I've been doing on them and adjusting as I need to go. And then of course, being able to go to sleep at a decent time so that I can actually have energy to be able to do those things. Okay, and then lastly, I have some of these questions that are supposed to lead you to your word of the year. I've been struggling with my word of the year. Last year, I felt like it came really easily to me because I, it was about trust. And the word leapt off the page and I didn't have to force it or anything. But this year, I'm trying to find a, a word that really talks about intention and action. And that has been very difficult. So I'm looking at maybe a couple words. 
mindful maestro because you know if you're the maestro you're the orchestrator you're the one who's like actively guiding everything toward a master plan and having that be mindful is getting at the intention piece which is you know having a purpose and then aligned action being again looking at being aligned with your personal goals trusting yourself and acting in that I don't know which one I'll ultimately choose, but I'm going to be part of a conversation tonight that'll hopefully hopefully narrow it down. Okay, so this is the kind of like the heart of the work that I was doing, which is breaking down each section and coming up with some ideas for what I want my goals to be. So I saw this maybe on the Facebook group, but taking the different highlighters and looking at some of the words that are listed and then highlighting the ones that stand out to me and using those to help me create my goals. The hard part is not getting stuck in this per particular list and still using your own metrics and your own thoughts to guide your goal setting. So there are some things on here, right, that are not listed that I want to work on. So you'll see that in my goals. And then from that mind map comes actually setting more concrete annual goals. And these are the ones that I want to focus on. So after watching this video, you probably are not surprised to find that my personal goal is to commit to doing those weekly and monthly rituals so that I can sit, reflect, and set the new goals for the week, and that includes spending time in my Moxie Life companion notebooks. I want to do less time on my phone, and so I think I'll just try to set some more weekly goals around what I would want to do with my time and attention that's outside of my phone. For fun and recreation, I want to take more active breaks. You heard me talk about this, and I want to get away from this grind culture where every single moment has to be productive. As an Enneagram with the wing of a three, which is the achiever, this is going to be very hard. I'm very used to seeing how my value is tied up with what I do. And then, of course, in order to fill that space, I want to get creative about what local activities are happening and plan for some of those with my friends. For work and learning, I want to make more time to actually read uh, the articles and the books about the latest learning and studies about how to be a better educator. I want to be more culturally relevant in my practice, and so reading those things and putting them into practice is going to be very important to me. For my content creation, I want to look at my Etsy shop opening just to see if that's something I wanted to do, learn more about Final Cut Pro, and then continue posting on YouTube at least once a week. For family and relationships, I'm going to continue maintaining some of those little touch points with friends via text, continue doing my cousin Zoom with my extended family and just staying in touch that way, and then documenting my parents' stories. They are telling more and more of their background stories. It is beautiful, and I'm recording them now and trying to make that into an archive. I should have done this earlier, but I didn't, so here I am doing it now. And then, like I said, wanting to make sure I learn the cultural foods and practices of my home culture. For health and wellness, I want to feel strong. I want to have energy. And so I want to do the things that support that. One of those things is lowering my cholesterol and hoping that I can do that through more veggie forward recipes and snacks, maintaining a good sleep schedule and being more regular and fun in my movement. For my spiritual and personal growth, I want to document my anti-racism uh, learning and application in a separate bullet journal, so I'll set that up soon. And then this question that I got from, this set of questions I got from listening to Brene's interview with Priya Parker on her podcast. And the question is basically, what am I good at and where is the need? I want to be able to spend my time volunteering with an organization for a cause that I really care about and engage with the work rather than just teaching about it. So this is something that I want to move toward. Similarly, I want to tune into local politics. I have been doing that. I have been writing, but I want to do this more regularly on causes that I care about. And then I saw this from uh, Cindy Gintert Baldo, Llama Letters, trying to do instead of morning pages, morning paragraphs. And I think I have the perfect planner for that. Okay, so thank you for bearing with me on my shaky cam and uh, just a little bit more. We have financial goals. I want to, you know, max out my Roth. I want to increase my passive income. I want to be more thoughtful about where I'm spending my money. And is it small? Is it BIPOC? Less on Amazon. Uh, through that mindful spending, I want to increase my savings rate and look at that down payment and car situation. Continuing with this planner freeze and getting clear on what I am donating in mutual aid and other organizations in my budget. 
For my physical environment, like I said, I'm going to reduce my belongings, try to feel lighter in that by de-owning and shopping my own stash, and then continuing with a cleaning routine that I can maintain little steps along the way, as well as look into decluttering my digital spaces as well. So in referencing the annual goals, I can break it down further into monthly goals here and hopefully be honest with myself about what I can accomplish and know that I don't have to like move mountains every single month or every single week on my goals. I can do focus on one, maybe. That's a more sustainable way than being like, I'm gonna tackle this entire project. So you'll see that when I broke this down. Instead of like committing completely to a routine, I have to first identify my cueing action. What is the action that's gonna to signal to my brain it's time to reflect? I'm thinking of lighting a candle. And then I'm gonna to try to start small and put my phone away during meetings taking breaks without my phone, hopefully with like an hour and build from there and just breaking these down into little, little things. So this month I want to read two articles and I know that it's a little bit lighter in my work in January um, once I do my curriculum updates so I can at least identify two articles, continue reading Breeding Sweetgrass, just like these little things that hopefully will translate easily to my weekly. So these are my weekly goals for this week and I'm still on break, so I didn't want to overdo it. So I'm setting these up and then hopefully I'll translate these into my weekly for my bullet journal and then schedule time with my Google calendar to time block and make sure that I have that as a reserved time. If it moves, it moves, but at least I have taken some time off of my availability to focus on these goals to move myself forward. That was a long video. Uh, so I'm really good at identifying goals and setting budgets and stuff, but it's the follow through that can be really challenging because again, I don't like feeling rigid about anything. So I'm going to keep following up with how I'm making this flexible and feel not limiting, but full of potential for myself and see if that resonates with any of you. So feel free to comment your questions underneath. What are the goals that you're setting? Is there something that I'm missing? Something that would help me achieve my goals? Let me know down below. And if you liked this, please subscribe, like, share, whatever. But in, at the end, I hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.